right in Chicago. They cleaned house, sort of. Matt Nagy is out as head coach. Ryan Pace is out as GM. There was talk about Pace sticking around with a different title. That didn't happen. The problem is, and, you know, I've been harping on this for a couple of years, that Ted Phillips has been the team president since 1999. He's brought the Bears organization three playoff victories since 1999. Here's George McCaskey, the chairman of the team from yesterday, talking about the effort to replace Nagy and Pace and Ted Phillips' role in that process. The decision on the next general manager and head coach will be mine. Ted has done an outstanding job as president and CEO of the Bears and will continue in that role. Our family has complete faith in him. He has persuaded me that with the pending acquisition of the Arlington Park property, and its evaluation as a possible future Bear Stadium, occupying much of his time and attention, the general manager should report to me. Bill Polian is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame because of his success as a pro football executive, including his hiring of two head coaches, Marv Levy and Tony Dungy, Dungy who are themselves in the Hall of Fame. He is well regarded in league circles and has a lot of contacts. We consider ourselves very fortunate to have Bill assisting us in our search. Uh, boy, there's a lot to say there. First of all, Ted Phillips persuaded George McCaskey to surrender. Well, yeah, I think authority over the football operation persuaded him. I, probably a different verb would apply there, but it's the right move. Look. Not They didn't go as far as they needed to because I think Phillips needs to be gone. He's had his chance. See, the problem is you get owners that don't know what the hell to do. And I'm not picking on George McCaskey or Virginia here. This, is, this happens throughout the league. They don't know what to do, so they have somebody there. They have that right-hand man who gets way too much power and has zero accountability. Eventually, he's a member of the family. You know, I'm having coffee with him every morning. He's bringing me calzones from Paisano's every day for lunch. I can't fire this guy. He has way too much power. He's too deeply ingrained in the organization. We don't know what to do with him. We, we don't want to get rid of him. I trust him implicitly is what George McCaskey said yesterday. Sometimes, though, that guy's got to go. But at least for now, he's focusing on the new stadium. Not a he's not going to be involved in Right. He's not going to be involved in football, right. I, but, but but he gets to hire the next GM. Uh, after he hires the GM, then he's going to step aside. I, I, you know, let's go ahead and, and do it the full way and say he's not going to be involved at all in hiring the next GM. He's not going to supervise the next GM. He's not going to be involved in hiring the next GM. He's out of football operations, and I'm taking over, and I'm going to hire the next GM. That's how it should be, Chris. Yeah, Well, that's how it should be. It's like how it should have been conveyed to a degree. I, I, I agreed with that. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, the Bears fans don't want to hear that. Oh, wait, the guy who hasn't hired that many great people is going to be hiring another person here and then go back into just organizational duties that I don't have anything to do with football? You know, hopefully it won't be that case. Hopefully that was misspeak or, or just, you know, trying to be gentle with a guy that they obviously have great respect for within, you know, the, the, the McCaskey family and, and Ted Phillips. You know, hopefully they'll lean on, you know, their own expertise and Bill Polian. Now, again, I don't know how much I love that whole aspect either. You know my thoughts about that. I mean, again, these, these older GMs, a lot of respect for Bill Polian. How connected is he to the game still? How much does he really, you know, how many different coaches does he know and is he really paying attention to the ones that are the right guys? Or is it just going to fall back into like the same old conversation, you know, where, hey, we're going to ask, you know, older GM who's been out of touch with the league for a while and wait, shocker, he's going to bring us some candidates from the old coaching tree that he used to be in charge of, you know, when he was in the league. Like that's to me where I just go, wait, be careful. You know, I mean, that, because that's what happens a lot. You see that. Oh, the guy we hired goes back to all the relationships he had prior to the league, really doesn't tell us anything about anybody new or anything there. He's just going to go back to the guys he knows, and we're going to sell – he's going to sell them. That's to, to me where the Bears got to be careful, the McCaskey family's oh. got to be careful. Uh, it's a huge mistake. Hey, right. if, if you don't have the ability on your own – 
through years and decades of owning the team and running the team to conduct your own search. If you don't have the contacts that you've developed with coaches and general managers and others around the league where you don't feel confident coming up with a slate of candidates, interviewing them and knowing who to pick and not to pick, if you have to hire a consultant to do that, then you should just sell the team. You've got no business being in the business. If you can't, because it's not all that complicated if you're truly in the business and you know what you're doing. You can put together on your own a list of the people that you should be talking to. And then you go talk to them and you make the decision on your own about who you believe is in the best position to run your team. Because when you hire a consultant, you are bringing to the table that person's biases, prejudices, likes, dislikes, you're going to hire one of his friends, one of his cronies, one of his friend's kids. It's, you're buying into that, that, that narrow-minded view of how a football operation should be run because you're basically abdicating your decision to a guy who's only there for the purpose of making that decision. And then he's gone. See, it's not on him. If, how, how, how many times has it ever happened, Chris, whether it's – and we can come up with the list. It's Bill Polian, Charlie Cassidy, Ron Wolf, Ernie Acorsi. Yes. How many times right. is there ever any accountability for one of these consultants who come in and force their candidate onto a team, right. and then that guy sucks and gets fired? Do we ever have a scorecard of, boy, no. let's see how Bill Polian's recommended hires right. have done when right. he works as a consultant. No, it's the perfect gig. They're going to pay you. You get to play kingmaker. And then whoever gets the job is indebted to you. So they have to take your calls and answer your texts. And you get to play puppet master a little bit. I get to tell them what to do. I get to feel like I'm still in the game. Look, I would not do that. If you want Bill Poland involved, George, if you want him involved, hire him to be your team president and have him stay there after he hires the GM and the coach so he's accountable yeah, for whatever right. mess he makes with whoever it is that he pushes on you to hire so he can re repay some debt or build a new debt where somebody's going to owe him something. It's a huge mistake. I beg any owner out there, and none of them are listening, but any of you that are, never do this. If you can't hire the guy on your own, sell the team. You can make good money right now by selling the team. You're better off doing something else with your time if you can't figure out who to hire as your GM or your head coach without hiring an outside consultant. No, I, I mean, I agree with that. I, I'm not a fan of the outside consultant type of thing. I, to, you, you explained it right. That's exactly – we just see that too many times. I bet you if we kept the scorecard, we'd go, oh, it didn't work out for the consultant more times than not. I mean, again, I actually want to sit here and think about it and go, like, I, in fact, I can't really remember a whole times – Many times where it ever really did work out with the, this type. We would of know if it did. Hey, we would know if it did of because course. they would be pushing, be and pushing it. Publicized, hey, right? Bill Polian's right. recommended coach and general manager right. has won two Super Bowls now. Yeah, and we never hear it. No, so it means it didn't happen. No, you're right. You're right. Instead, we're talking about you know hires that were made 40 years ago and a hire that was made you know 20 20 years ago. And and, and yeah, that's where I certainly question that. You know, again, I do think it was. I understand. Of course, them firing Matt Nagy, 100%. Ryan Pace, I get that, all that too. You know, I know there's some out there that go, well, man, he made the playoffs two out of the last three years. Hey, the context of this is too is that team was a playoff team, period. Probably should have gone farther into the playoffs. Probably should have had better seating in the playoffs those times. It wasn't like Matt Nagy was bringing a team that was like, we were like, whoa, they are a, they are a piece of crap. And somehow they got in the playoffs. No. The team underperformed, in my opinion. The defense was a borderline Super Bowl defense there at the beginning. I mean, they were dominant. They were a bunch of ass kickers that way. You know, the quarterback situation with Trubisky, that was a debacle. You know, yes, they missed out on the evaluation there, and I know that wasn't Nagy's fault, but, you know, never really did anything to, to make him any better, and we could see it really wasn't him the issue with the offense. We saw that again this year, you know, before Justin Fields got in. But, the, but that, to me, too, is you know part of the equation. I just had to say that part because I, I have too many people going, we made the playoffs. You know, to, I, I get it, and I respect that to a degree. But it's also about what was the available potential for the football team, too. We talk about the old line. Oh, there's so many issues. Offensive line wasn't as bad as everybody tried to make it to be. It was, just a, it was a get out of jail excuse free card there. You could see they got into running the ball last year. They got into it this year. They ran the ball. It just wasn't the approach. They were still trying to run Patrick Mahomes' Kansas City Chiefs offense with a team that wasn't built for that. 
So there was a disconnect there, an issue there. I understand them making that move. I don't understand the Bill Polian and consultant thing. I'll say that, and I'm going to be interested to see where the Bears go with this hire. Here's the last piece of free advice for the Bears, and they're definitely getting their money's worth. Think back to the original early days of Matt Nagy and Mitchell Trubisky. It was a bad fit from the get-go. Yes. Nagy didn't want Trubisky. Right. Nagy tolerated Trubisky until he could finally get rid of him. And good luck, good luck finding a coach who will truthfully tell you I'm all in with Justin Fields. Good luck with that. Because you you know we're looking for a, a very precise intersection here of coaches that Bill Polian is going to bring to the table and coaches who are truthfully going to say the guy you gave up next year's first round pick to package with last year's first round pick to trade up and get is my guy. You're going to have a very narrow subset of guys who are truthfully going to be able to say they want Justin Fields and don't embark on immediately an effort to undermine Justin Fields and move on to the quarterback that he wants. Because, Chris, we know that that's how the game is played. We saw it play out between Nagy and Trubisky. No, I, I mean, it, it's, it's probably the number one thing they got to figure out. You know, they, they got to be careful. That you're right. No coach is going to be very delicate who wants that job about that type of conversation. You got to do your best to, yes, vet these candidates to, again, you're, Fields is the quarterback. He's the guy. You do got to get a, you got to find a coach that, that's going to go, okay, I, I'm going to buy into that. And you're going to try to sift through the weeds there a little bit to your saying to find a guy that really does want to make it work and has a vision to make a wor offense work behind Justin Fields. That's a big part of this. And that's going to be a big part of the equation. I think is them finding the right guy there that, that is sold on that sold on Fields to agree and going to build on what he is right now. They traded away first round picks. They can't just throw him out the door right now and he showed positive signs here and played well his rookie year to where you go there's something to build on with this guy hi i'm mike tarico and thanks for watching make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from nbc sports